Hello, Deathlings. You're probably familiar with this book. Over 25 million copies sold. It's The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I purchased this book as a prop for this video, so I could not tell you what the actual seven habits are. Don't eat yogurt past the expiration date. Hug a lot of puppies. Never get involved in a land war in Asia. Fried is better than steamed. Wash your hands, no racist tweets, and uh, be born rich. Seven habits of highly effective people. Mm, smells nice. So maybe I don't have a handle on this, but what I can offer are seven habits of highly successful death positive people. Powerful lessons in personal change to your views on death. Here we go. Habit one, refuse to be embarrassed. So you're interested in death, are you? You want to survey African-American burial grounds from the 18th century. You want to go to grad school in thanatology. You want to open a green burial ground? Good. I hope everyone in your life thinks that is very cool. If they don't, do not apologize. Do not get into a habit of justifying your interest in death. It is not embarrassing. Say it loud and proud. Death. Death. I think my greatest success as a communicator and advocate is that I am fascinated by death and no one can shake me from that. Because of that, I almost never have someone say to me, Oh, you do what? That's bizarre. And if they did say that, I'm thinking, Hallelujah, we got a death phobic here. Time to take this person on a journey through mortality. What an exciting opportunity. Come, sit by me. It's gonna be a long night. Two. Treat death like exercise. I wish that I could go to the gym once a year, but it doesn't work like that. You don't just get to exercise once a year and enjoy all the positive effects long term. It's use it or lose it. For me, mostly lose it. The same goes for a relationship with death. One does not simply write an advanced directive or have one end of life conversation with your mom or tell one person you want to be cremated. And all of a sudden you and death are all good forever. It's an ongoing process. Your relationship to death will always be changing. So even though it's hard, you have to be consistently checking in. Okay, the third habit of a highly effective death positive person, not setting timelines for grief. What's wrong with you? I don't understand. Your dad died like over six months ago. What? You're still not over your favorite character being killed off of that HBO show two years ago, and you think I should be over the death of my own father? Out of here with that. Grief ebbs and flows, recedes, comes roaring back with a vengeance. Don't set arbitrary dates or timelines for yourself to get over it. And speak up when you see others try to do it to you or other people. Habit four, see death everywhere. I don't mean like piles of corpses and a grim reaper waiting around every corner. I mean make yourself more sensitive to the behavior of others and how the knowledge or fear of death affects people. Why is your partner so desperate for that promotion? Oh, because they will die one day. Why is your mother-in-law so desperate for you to get pregnant? Hey, it's because she will die one day. But why is that dictator threatening? Because he will die one day. Death, 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 fear, death, death. It's all death. My friends, are they aware of how influenced they are by death? Are you, for that matter? Look around, people. Habit five is respecting inequalities in death. Being death positive means respecting that it might be harder for others to be death positive. Not all deaths are created equal. Say a family is poor or dealing directly with a bad death or violent death. They might benefit from parts of death positivity. For example, knowing their legal rights at a funeral home, or how to avoid spending more money than they have or want to, or how to open up their profound grief in a safe space. But in their moment of crisis, their death positivity might not look like yours. It might never look like yours. That's okay. Different communities, families, people have different versions of death, different versions of a good death, and respecting those differences is crucial. 
Six, helping your community. What's the thing you are doing this year to help your community with death? Community can mean your physical community, your neighborhood, online, family, chosen family, whatever that means. Are there new alkaline hydrolysis laws coming up for a vote in your state or country? Can you host workshops to fill out advanced directives? Can you help a friend whose mother died unexpectedly call funeral homes for prices? Just being the person in your community who can talk openly about death without shame, that's worth its weight in gold. And finally, habit seven, be nice to yourself. This is an important habit to have in all parts of your life. Do not beat yourself up over where you are in your journey to accept death. I'm guilty of this. No one can be meaner to me than a me. It's self-sabotaging to attack yourself for not being as zen about death as you could be. That you don't want your dad or your partner to die. Yeah, duh. There's a lot about death that sucks. It's okay to feel bad about death. Remember habit number two? Death is a journey. That's always part of your life, every day, forever and ever, until you die. You might as well get comfy with your companion. There we go, seven habits of highly effective death positive people. I don't expect this version will go to 25 million people, but if it can just affect the life of one person, that's enough for me. Why did God give me this life? Why did God give me this life? This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Hey death, oh death, hey death, oh death, 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 we are death, 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 death.